Okay, day 36 of our one hour a day workout. It's only about 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm getting started early because I've been doing my workouts like wait until late in the evening, 8 o'clock, uploading at 9 o'clock. But today, and for about another two weeks to a month, I need to get my workouts out the way because I'm taking a mortgage test. It's called SAFE, the mortgage originator. You know, when you're dealing with the... Um, with the banks and stuff. For you homeowners or wanna be homeowners. Yeah. Okay, so today we wanna get a little personal. I wanna get a little personal for my youth and my outcast people. You know, I, I go by things that I experience. So from my experience, um, what happened to me and what I always talk about, I'm going to give you all the explanation and the reason why today that happened to me. So let me just get my workspace set up. So we're going to go down to the flow. All right. Oh, I forgot to put my sneakers on. I'm gonna need my sneakers. If anybody seen my workout yesterday, I caught a pain. I caught an old lady pain underneath my chest, and I was not feeling well. Let me get my sneakers because. <clears throat> It's better with my sneakers. Okay, <laughs> got my sneakers. These are sneakers, I love these sneakers. I don't care what nobody say. Oh, she always got on those sneakers. I'm not trying to make no fashion statement unless somebody want to sponsor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Unless some, you know, a sports company want to sponsor and they want to send me some gear. Um, got my little karate gloves and my little fan band. Okay, my um, <clears throat> my battery is like saying halfway, so I don't know how long it's gonna last. If it's gonna last the whole hour, I will try to get the charger. If I run out, oh, Matt is dirty today. Let's try to do some planking. <clears throat> I can't, I can't today. Whew. I had old lady issues yesterday. I want y'all to check out my hair. Like, y'all usually see my hair in a ponytail, right? And today I got my hair in braids. These is my little lengthy braids in the back. You know, up here. I'm getting personal today because I want to explain to youth, anybody else that might have a personal problem um i used to have a fungus in my scalp i used to mess with this uh before i was out the closet you know um i used to be attracted to some you know good looking guy light skin this dude had um he was a real night nice looking guy and i met him on a bus and I was like, ooh, he was fine. I was just a blushing and blushing and blushing, right? And I met this guy, and he said something to me. So I was like, oh, wow, he said something to me, you know? So I commenced to talking to him. 
unlike the ladies in the uh, the lady in the um, in the uh, liquor store in Harlem, this guy that I should have never said anything to, should have never gave no conversation to. Uh, he was a nice looking guy. I was like, oh, he is so fine. So he must have seen me like blushing and looking at him or whatever the situation is. So he said something to me. <laughs> and so he continued to get off the bus uh, with me at my stop. And I was like, oh, wow, he's, he's getting off at the same stop as me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, come to find out to meet him, you know, I was a young girl around 16, and that dude had to be around 18 or 19. You know, he was older and um, experienced out in the world in the streets. So, uh, he would come visit me, come over. I was staying with my sister at the time. And I remember going to visit him maybe once or twice. He didn't live nowhere but in the projects. I lived in a private house with my sister uptown. <coughs> and um, <clears throat> when I went to his house, his house was nasty. You know, he had bugs all in the bed, crabs and all of that stuff in the bed. But stupid ass me, <clears throat> he was just a good looking guy. It looked like my fingers getting ready to break. He was a good looking guy. And I stuck with him, <clears throat> you know. <clears throat> you know, how could somebody be so good looking that, you know, you see them with crabs and uh, nasty, a nasty house and a nasty room. When I went into his house, I don't know if it was his mother and his father or his grandmother, they was old people. An old lady and an old man in the living room. The house don't look like it was maintained or painted or nothing. His bed had bugs and all of that stuff in there. And I'm so in love with this guy by his looks that I ignore all his faults. <clears throat> he comes, he comes he comes over to my house, to my sister's house, and while they're away, and, um, you know, he comes, he got drugs, he's a dope fiend, you know, he's using dope, giving me dope, um, and, you know, he's inching with bugs. And he threw bugs in my hair, you know? And I'm like, oh, shoot, <laughs> you know, like my hair. And ever since then, I never got rid of the itchy problem, no matter how much uh, lice medicine, uh, shampoo, no matter what I used on my hair, I constantly had like an inching problem in the middle of my hair. It came from that guy. It just didn't come out of thin air. And so one time, because uh, I used to have an afro, I used to wear like an afro, and he just like messed up my afro because I used to just like scratch and scratch a bald spot. But no matter how much I scratched, hair used to always still grow in that spot. It used to still grow up in that spot. I used to scratch and scratch my skin and my scalp. And one time he came over and I begged my sister to use her car, you know, because I think I had my driver's license at 16. You know, I got my stuff early. So I begged, so can we borrow the car? So she was all cool and everything. And she was like, yeah. She let us borrow the car. And I let him drive. And he wanted to go hang out with his I guess real friends. <laughs> and so he tricked me out of the car. Uh, uh, 
he told me to get out and come around to the driver's side so I could drive. And when I got out of the passenger side to come around, uh, he slammed the door and took off. <sighs> then my sister <laughs> had to file a police report <clears throat> and she ended up uh, finding her car and letting the police know where, you know, her car was located. And he ended up getting arrested. I don't think she pressed charges on him, but that was the end of him. <clears throat> but from 16, I say I'll be 55 this year. My problem went away about a couple of years ago. I mean, completely, completely like, it started getting under control when I was, you know, I would have a struggle, I guess since in my 40s. If I shampoo a lot, shampoo a lot, you know, use tea gel, uh, tar shampoo, all kind of stuff I used to use. I used to uh, use different products, see different dermatologists, get different shampoos, different solutions, you know. And nothing would like, nothing would take that inch away. It was just like deep. And I think it's because whatever was in my scalp was, it, it sunk down into my skin so deep that, you know, it took forever. So one time I got, Tea tree oil. Remember that name, tea tree oil. And I poured some tea tree oil in the spot. And the tea tree oil just sank down into my scalp. And that deep, deep inch that I had, uh, it kind of resolved it, right? The tea tree oil. I said, oh, I think it's... Uh, I think it's better. I was telling my daughter, I think, I think, I think it's better. The tea tree oil uh, got down into my scalp and this deep inch that I used to have, it went away. But then it came, you know, it came back. Not as bad as it was before. It just would, you know, come back. <sighs> I went to the emergency room one time and they took a skin graft. They cut my skin on one side because I had two spots, one here and one here. And over here, they cut the scalp, put some medicine down there, and they couldn't figure out. They still couldn't figure out what it was. And um, she said, your, your hair might not grow back where, you know, they took the, the, the little piece of scalp out but that grew back. Over here where I had the entry part problem where it was stubborn that my, my hair was still growing back. So I said, you know, they said if it was ringworms, your hair don't grow back, it'd be bald. So I said, it's not ringworms, you know? So basically it was some kind of fungus in my scalp. And I said, it's something that's never, never going to go away. <laughs> so, like I said, I got this tea tree oil. I got um, tea gel. Uh, it's a tar shampoo. I just used to spend dollars and on top of dollars on different products over the counter that's on the shelf. Head and shoulders. <laughs> Anything that, you know, relieve an empty scalp. <clears throat> and sometimes when I used to braid my hair like this, you would be able to see that it'd be thinning in here, but you don't see that now. It's not thinning, you know. And, you know, my hair grows long. I don't have that inch. Like by now, I would have been like up at my scalp scratching if I still had the problem. Like every second, I'd be up there scratching. 
Well, eventually, I found a dermatologist. He's in Corp City. And, um, um, he gave me something that a dermatologist gave me before. It, it starts with a K. It's like a, like a red shampoo. And then it's like a, a little tube of liquid. And I went back and told him, I said, you know, this stuff is working a little bit. I used to use this shampoo before and it's all good and everything like that, but it's not it's not resolving the, the issue. You know, it seemed like the issue was resolving, you know, but it's not fully going away. So he said, okay. And he kept me with the same shampoo, but that little tube of um, solution, a clear solution, he upgraded it. Uh, to a stronger potion that no dermatologist ever gave me before. And I used it faithfully. And I used the shampoo just on the spot because when I was younger, when I first had the problem, the dermatologist used to give me the shampoo and I used to shampoo my whole scalp with it. And they used to be like, you know, your insurance don't cover for you to keep getting it, you know, the shampoo every week or every two weeks. You can only get it once a month under your insurance, under your Medicaid. So, and the shampoo was very expensive. So, um, like a hundred and something dollars or two hundred and something dollars. So he said, you only supposed to use it on one little spot, you know. So I had a Chinese doctor. He said, I'm not, I'm not. Don't give it, I'm not prescribing you nothing no more. I'm not giving you nothing no more because you're not using it the way you're supposed to. So, lo and behold, when I got with this dermatologist in Corp City, and he gave me the shampoo, I said, I'm just going to use it on the spot so, I could, so it could last, so I could have enough. You know what I'm saying? That's what I did. He upped the, the scalp, this uh, ointment solution. I have the name in there, and and it went it went away. You know, I continued to use my tea tree oil. Uh, I went to the ninety nine cent store, and I used some um, like foot fungus cream. I just was like piling everything on top of everything. <laughs> And you know what? It went away. But that's not before. Like I always say, I had issues with my first cousin. And he got me kicked out the organization. You know, stopped me from my business and my jobs. Well, that's the way he was able to do it. Because he went and told the people that was helping me get contracts and jobs that oh she look at her she got nasty hair she scratching her hair she got issues with her hair and have people focus on it you know what i'm saying like you might be able to notice me scratching if you look you know if you watch me you know when i had the problem but the area like the rest of my scalp, I used to be able to put it in a ponytail, cover that spot, or, you know, wear extensions and cover that spot, you know what I'm saying? So, you you know, you really wouldn't see it. So if you really looked at me, you might see me going up and scratching my head, you know, because I used to always have, constantly have like a tingle. Anyway, that's the way he was able to upstage me because... I had an itchy scalp. <laughs> and that's the whole story. Uh, it was stubborn. It was a very stubborn scalp. Uh, it was it was bothersome. And, you know, it wasn't favor, favorable for, you know, female, you know. Like, uh, who, Tyson had the same um, kind of issue. Like, he used to always have that spot and scratch. I had the same problems with it as Tyson, you know. 
<clears throat> that little bald spot. <sighs> but the only thing that I can re equate it to is that nasty boyfriend that I had that had crabs and um he he threw threw something in my hair one time and I said that probably was one of them damn crabs and from there I was inchy I washed my hair used light shampoo and everything all over my body for years and the thing just never went away so whatever it was that he threw in my hair might have died, but it left behind like a fungus. <sighs> then I said, you know, I was thinking today, I'm going to do my workout, I'm going to talk about this today. But it may help somebody out. You know, I don't get views. Um, um, I don't hardly get any views. But if you're viewing this and you have like a, a scalp issue or a skin issue, see your dermatologist. You know, back in the days, uh, it used to be hard to get a dermatologist appointment. Matter of fact, one of my dermatologist appointments that I was looking forward to, that I was waiting for like for like three or six months, I was waiting a long time for this appointment. It was on 9-11 when they knocked the World Trade Center down. I was supposed to see my dermatologist that day and they knocked the World Trade Center down and I still went to the, to the hospital to see my dermatologist because I said, this is my appointment and I've been waiting, you know, like six months for this appointment to see this dermatologist. And they had the hospitals all locked down and everything. And it was crazy. I was like, oh, shoot. I was supposed to see a dermatologist, you know, to help me with my scalp, you know, at the, uh, at the Jacoby, at, all the way up here in the Bronx. Even though the World Trade Center was knocked down in, in Manhattan, <laughs> they had the hospitals locked down, and they said they're not taking nobody. They said, did you come from the World Trade Center? Was you in that um, World Trade Center? And I said, no. Then they said, we can't take you. We only could take people that was at the World Trade Center, you know. <sighs> so that was 9-11, that was what, 2001? <laughs> and so uh, all the way from when I was uh, 16, shit, that was like in the 80s. <laughs> was that the 80s still? Yeah, it was the 80s because my daughter was born in 1990. So that was from, from the late 80s all the way up to, in the, to the 2000s. I had that scalp problem. <clears throat> they, they was treating like the wrong thing. Like they was calling it eczema. This, that, and other, them skin problems that don't go away, that people live with forever. That's what the doctors was telling me it was, was like eczema. So they had me being treated for like the wrong thing and giving me creams and stuff for the wrong thing. So I said, it's crazy because my hair is it, it, still, you know, was growing through my scalp, you know, no matter how much I was inching, I was scratching bald spots, I was scratching bloody spots. Like I would have a big, all of this would be bald in the middle. It was real bad, but you know what? My hair would continue to grow back. <clears throat> so, so I said, something is wrong but something is still right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> something is wrong, but my hair is still coming through my scalp, no matter how much I do to scratch up my scalp. They took a, a scalp graph where um, they cut into my scalp and took a piece of scalp out to test it. And the nurse that did that said, you, you know, the hair might not grow back. And that was on this side, and it grew back. So, 
my hair would never stop growing back, you know? So, oh, I can see, you know, if you get something in your scalp, it could live there forever, like, you know, you get a foreign body. I don't know what they call it, but, you know, you could get something into your, in, into your scalp, into your skin that'll live there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, for years. Just living your scalp for years, so y'all be careful with that. <sighs> and if you need any solutions that I use or some remedies that I think may help, uh, you know, leave a comment. Find me on Instagram, the Duchess, and DM me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's a personal thing that I want to share today. <laughs> so I'm getting my workout. I'm not working hard because yesterday I had court chest pain, so I'm not really working that hard. Uh, I'm just running conversation. I used to do celebrity gossip, so, you know, I think the workout alone would be boring without the gossip, so... We're going to gossip a little bit, but we're going to learn a little bit, too, you know? Uh, <clears throat> we're going to learn about some personal stuff where is, you know, just take care of yourself. Um, don't worry about the, the gangs, because people will have something wrong with themselves. Like, my cousin used, he, he put everybody on to me having a, the fungus scalp problem, the itchy scalp problem, but ever since we was kids, like my mother died and I had to live with his mother and his toes used to peel off from having fungus on his toes. And he used to, I used to hate him. I used to be like, ew, you know what I'm saying? And his skin used to fall off his toes and he used to be running around ugly and nasty. And oh, they used to put uh, cream on his uh, toes and his skin be peeling and you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so I don't know if he remember that or not, but <laughs> yeah, what I had in my scalp, he had on his toes as a kid. <sighs> And I used to think that he was so disgusting, you know what I'm saying? For later on in life, for me to have that shit in my scalp. <sighs> for later on in life, for me to catch something in my scalp. So they be talking about black woman hairs and stuff like that, but you know, we, uh, um, uh, what you, what you call it, um, Nappy hair or coarse hair is the best hair. Thick hair, like they say. And Jesus had woolly hair, you know what I'm saying? It's no way he could have had straight hair if he was like in a desert <laughs> with the sun beaming. He had to have woolly. The Bible said he had woolly hair. That's what we got. We got woolly here, you know? <sighs> but people will try to find a way to put you down, to outcast you, so that they can shine. So they, you know, some people have the method of, like, stepping on somebody else so that they could lift they self up, you know, stepping on other people, you know. They just can't make it by themselves. So they 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 disgrace the next person. They find something about the next person. <clears throat> so um my cousin put me on blast that I had a bad scalp or anti scalp. Uh, my hair was, you know, messed up. <clears throat> uh. 
Okay, so we're half an hour. So we had it early today, y'all. Uh, this is a story I never thought that I would tell in my life. <laughs> but I, here I am on YouTube telling a personal story. You know. But why I talk about stuff that's not going to be beneficial to anybody? And mainly if, you know, if I have my young black uh, females that, you know, if I went through it, probably the next young girl will, you know, run into different dudes or nasty dudes that will give them crab or some kind of fungus or something that mess with their skin or their scalp or their hair or something like that. You need to see a dermatologist, you know, and if that's not working, let them use something stronger, you know what I'm saying? Or if that dermatologist is not serving, solving the problem, find another one, you know what I'm saying? Our, our main thing is our skin and our hair, you know what I'm saying? You know, and our hair growing and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So, some of us, some of us have, uh, which some doctors thought was my problem, was just a, like a heavy dandruff problem, you know, that was causing an inch. But it wasn't just dandruff, it was like a fungus that was in my scalp. You know, but it had it had the disguise. It had the disguise of dandruff because I used to scratch and it used to be flaky. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was right up in here. I would never get a full braid like this. You know, you would be able to see this braid like real thinning and stuff like that. But it's better now. You know what I'm saying? So I, I could talk about it. You know what I'm saying? And all the rest of my hair around used to grow. But I used to have an inchy problem right up in here. And constantly I used to scratch. And constantly I used to scratch. And sometimes I used to think it was just a force of habit. You know what I'm saying? You know, I used to reach to my scalp and scratch so much that it was all almost like a... It became like a habit, like, that I'm reaching to my scalp, you know? So yes, I used to wash my hair regularly, every day, every other day, no matter what I did. You would think that I was a dirty person as much as I used to scratch. And then um, when I used to get high, you would think that it was um, what they called like the, the the cocaine inch, you know, you know when you get high, it makes you feel like you something is crawling under your skin and stuff. So all of that, you know. But even after you know, I cleaned up and and stopped hanging out in the street, stopped getting high and everything. Um, still had the inch, you know. And then I was doing, uh, running the cleaning business, and I used to clean a lot of dirty buildings after construction workers and a lot of shitty toilets and stuff. And even after I stopped doing that business, still had the inch, you know. But after stopping doing cleanup, and being away from dirt and dust a lot, it did start getting better. So, like, whereas the spot used to be big, it had started shrinking small. And I started noticing that. Let me get up off this floor, y'all. Mm -hmm. to bring the story because I don't know I used to wear this ponytail at the top and um, you know everybody like anybody in my family that know me 
or any friends that might be watching this that know about my anti scalp, they might be looking at me on video like, wow, her hair is doing good. She, she wears a ponytail and she's not, you know, reaching and scratching. What's up? The problem went away or whatever? Well, yes, it did. It did. It went away. I, doubt, I dealt with the problem over 30 years. <clears throat> Let me see. Over 30 years. And my cousin was able to capitalize off of my problem. Because... I had an organization that was getting construction jobs, you know, for their membership. And, you know, my family had been in the same business and doing cleanup and stuff, so this organization wasn't doing cleanup. So, you know, I approached the, the president and to asked him, you know, I want to go around and make contracts with the same contractors and stuff. So that's what I was doing for like 10 years. Mind you, I did still have the problem in my scout when I started. But I had opened up this store, got an SBA loan like I explained in other videos. I got a small business loan and I opened up a store. A lot of people became jealous of whatever the situation is and... um. I didn't know behind my back that people was backstabbing me, being so jealous. You know, I thought that if I got this business, I thought that, you know, people be like, yeah, let's, you know, we got something. We got a store. Let's, you know, make this happen. Because everybody around, you know, the Mexican hand stores, they had the Black Falcons, uh, had their motorcycle gang. But everything else was like, you know, Spanish bodegas and, you know, uh, grocery stores and stuff that was owned by Spanish and, and every other nationalities, the blacks didn't have much or nothing. So I thought when I opened my store, I thought that, you know, I was going to have a lot of support, but it was the opposite. Like, family was jealous. You know, the guys, you know, that was from the same organization, they used to ride by, they didn't stop. They used to just look, you know what I'm saying? And when I lost the store, I found out that people, you know, behind my back was talking bad about me with this president of this organization, and he stopped my contracts, you know, he stopped, you know, I would go to the construction site and I can't get on a job no more. I can't go talk to the super no more about cleaning jobs, about the contracts, like I used to. You know, they used to have niggas at the gate, like security, like you can't come in. I'm like, all of a sudden I can't come into the job. Anyway, lo and behold, I lost the store. I end up back at the organization like everybody else, trying to get a job and stuff. So when they could see that I lost the store and I came back, I was game. I was fair game. It was like, oh, yeah, now you lost your store. Now you, you back with everybody else. You in the same boat with everybody else. And I just came back to a whole bunch of dislike and, you know, my cousin was over there. He was pointing out all my faults and stuff like that, you know. I wasn't getting no jobs. I was falling off, you know. I was bummed out, you know. My sneakers was turned over. It was it was like really getting bad over there. Mind you, my family used to run an organization, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I didn't know what it was. I, I thought that maybe, you know, they didn't want to help out somebody from, you know, my family, because they used to fight, I guess, have beef with each other, or whatever the situation is, and here I am at their organization, you know. But, you know, you never know, you know, really what it is, but for you black women, you know, and young girls, mainly teenagers and stuff like that, you know, you're gonna run into men, like the ladies in Harlem ran into the guys in the um, liquor store. Like I ran into, you know, you might run into a guy that's, you know, the image of what you like, the good-looking image 
oh, he's so fine, he's so handsome, you know, that's just what I want in a man, you know what I'm saying? He might be the whole makeup, his face, his hair, his body shape, his height, you know, his build and everything might be everything that you like. But be careful of the good looking guy. Because the good looking guy is the one that caused the, the inch in the scalp, you know. He was, he was nasty, you know what I'm saying? You know, he had crabs and uh, lights and all of that stuff. And, and I was a fool still hanging around him and stuff. Going to his house, bringing him around to my house and stuff, you know. And even though, you know, I got the shampoo and all that stuff, those bugs come with, you know, they'll, they'll leave behind a um, a fungus, you know. Or, or they'll get down into your scalp and, and live there, you know what I'm saying? So, be careful of who you're dealing with. Don't be anxious to be making friends. Don't be anxious to be, like, so much in a relationship. Make sure niggas is clean. Make sure niggas got, you know, decent household and their families. Check them out real good. Make sure they cleansy people. Because you can run into the wrong dirty, uh, dirty nigga, you know what I'm saying? And mainly, you know, the my thing is that, okay, I caught that fungus in the scalp, but at least I didn't catch no AIDS, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> eventually AIDS came about, people used to get... Um, gonorrhea and syphilis. I never got none of, you know, all of those diseases or nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? So, at least the the worst thing I got was a crab, you understand what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I got an inchy scalp that lasted forever, but it's gone now. I'm happy. I still have some life left in me, you know what I'm saying? And, um, if my cousin is looking at me, he probably like, wow, her hair is better, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I had a, uh, I have a nephew that had a, a spot in the back of his head. So he used to go to his doctor. And he used to come up with remedies and tell me about it. And I used to try to use his stuff. And, um, and I used to tell him about my stuff. And he used to try to use my stuff. And I don't know where my nephew problem come from. I know where my problem came from, right? <laughs> but my, my nephew had... Um, uh, a bald spot in the back of his head that inch, and I had one on the top of my head. So it seemed like it was something that ran in the family, you know what I'm saying? But I think mine came basically from my boyfriend, you know what I'm saying, from a nasty guy that I was with. But like I was saying, at least, you know, he didn't give me AIDS or no gonorrhea, you know. I mean, I've had cousins and uh, people that I've known, you know, hung around that ended up with AIDS and died from AIDS and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? You know, it, it, it's crazy when AIDS came around because there's some dudes that, you know, you know, you could have been drunk or high and ended up having sex with them and uh, ended up sleeping with them and, you know, by accident or, you know, just for not being in your right mind and, 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 and getting AIDS, you know what I'm saying? So, I used to live in this building where about 10 people had got AIDS, you know. It was crazy. And, um, and even though I used to frequent where, you know, they all used to hang out and get high in one apartment. Even though I used to frequent that place, there was nobody in there that I ever slept with. So, um, I was just lucky because when they started getting sick and dying and stuff like that, it's like everybody in that apartment, <laughs> you know, they used to hang out in there. Like 10 people got sick and died. I think one... One girl, like her mother died of AIDS, and then her, the daughter, um, the daughter, 
Um, I think she survived. She almost died, but she went into the hospital. And, I, and uh, I guess this is when they came out with some kind of medicine or whatever. And she got real skinny. And she went into the hospital and she was about to die. And then they was giving her this medicine. I don't know what it was. But it was almost like a miracle for AIDS people. And she started getting healthy. And I think she's still alive today. You know? So at least he didn't give me nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? But if you have any, like, skin problem, scalp problem, go see a dermatologist. Take care of it. Don't be ashamed, you know what I'm saying, to seek uh, a medical attention. Because sometimes when you're a teenager, you be shy, ashamed. I used to go to the uh, pharmacy and I used to be trying to buy the, the lice medicine when I was a kid. You know, when I was a teenager, when I first had the problem, and they used to be telling me I had to be 18 to get certain things and stuff like that. And certain things I used to go in there for, and they used to be like, you need a prescription and all kinds of stuff like that. That means that I would have had to go to my older sister and let her know, oh, I got this problem, and, you know... I would have had to tell her that I had this nasty problem. Well, that's what I was supposed to do anyway because she was my guardian at the time. You know what I'm saying? But I was too ashamed. So what I'm saying is that don't be ashamed if you have an issue. You know what I'm saying? If you have an issue, you know, take care of it because things could seep down into your skin, mainly if it's your scalp. It, it'll seep down and it'll feed off of your body. You know what I'm saying? So... Just like we're trying to get our weight down and get all the worms and the, everything, the parasites out of our bodies and stuff and cleanse our body and detox and stuff like that. It's the same type of thing, you know. I was thinking about that. That's the same type of thing, you know. Something could leach, you know, leach onto your, your body and to your skin and um, live on there, you know what I'm saying. If you don't get it out of there, it, it'll live on there. And not all alcohol, not all um, head and shoulders, you know, dandruff shampoos and stuff like that can take care of the, the problem. And your problem might not be permanent. Some people think, oh, I got this problem because this is this is a bad a dandruff thing that I have. But it might not be that. It might be something that's curable. So you got to see a dermatologist about it. You understand what I'm saying? You know, a lot of people got scaly scalps and thick scales on their scalps and stuff like that. But sometimes that be like a fungus and stuff like that that you can um, you can solve like I did. Anyway, that's my personal. That's one of the ones I I, I really wouldn't want to share with nobody. But why not? I'm old for fifty. I'll be fifty five this year. Like. You know, you got young kids, young girls, even young boys, you know what I'm saying? Um, if you have an issue, you know what I'm saying? You got fungus in your feet. Some people can get fungus in between their legs and stuff like that. Go see a dermatologist, you know, so that you don't live with it for the rest of your life and stuff like that. And let them keep figuring it out. Use your medicine correctly or whatever you have to do and take care of it. A lot of kids, they play in the, the dirt and they get ringworms and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, and they get that stuff in their scalp and stuff like that. And that's a real nasty one, you know. I used to think that I had that. But with the ringworms, they said the hair don't grow back. But my hair was growing back, so it couldn't have been that. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what, just like you got to see a GYN, a gynecologist, the, the, the girls, you know, at a very young age get their menstrual, they got to see a uh, gynecologist, you know, on a regular basis, you know, if you got an issue, dermatologist, you know, take care of your skin. Take care of your scalp, you know what I'm saying? Take care of your health between your legs, you know what I'm saying? 
Don't just let any niggas run up in you like raw. You know what I'm saying? Because you end up with an incurable disease. You know what I'm saying? You end up with AIDS or, or syphilis or, you know. We childbearing, you know, we the childbearing sex. You know what I'm saying? We get pregnant, we, you know, baby have to come between our legs. So we have to be clean. You know, we have to be cleansy. We got to be free of diseases. You understand what I'm saying? And then if you have a problem that's, you know, outer body, like in your face or your head or something like that, then, you know, it's going to make you an outcast, you know what I'm saying? You know, people going to tease you. They're going to outcast you. They're going to point you out, you know what I'm saying? Mainly somebody that, mainly somebody that um, don't feel 100% about they self or they looks. They're going to point out your, your issue, you know what I'm saying? If they think that you look better than them, but they see that you got an inchy scalp, like my cousin seen I had an inchy scalp. Oh, look, she here. She got an empty hair. She good. And, and he pointed out my issue. You understand what I'm saying? Because he wanted to feel better than me, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, you my cousin. We grew up in the same household. You didn't have to point me out in the street. You could have, you know... You could have pulled me to the side and said, hey, what, what's, what's your problem? Why you keep scratching your head? What's, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, um, why don't you come see my doctor? Or, 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 you know, he could have, like, quietly on the side helped me out. Just like I say with Uncle Murder and um, Mayno. And they bothered K. Michelle about, you know, oh, yeah, he was going to have sex with her and... And under the covers, she smelled real bad, you know what I'm saying? Talking about her pussy stink, right? So instead of her just brushing it off and making them look stupid, she got real emotional about it. So that was her mistake. She shouldn't have got emotional about it because something, I guess, was really wrong. But if anybody know who K. Michelle is, you know, the famous singer, she, um, um, she was getting those butt enhancement, like all of them was doing, Nicki Minaj and all of them was doing, getting them uh, butt implants, getting stuff put in, input into their butt so their butt could sit out there high so that they could be attractive to the men. But what was happening with those butt implants was that they were leaking. They would leak or whatever. I'm not really sure, you know, because I never known nobody that had that, but... Um, the way I understand it is that if some of them used to sag and drop and it give the butt a funny looking shape, some of them used to leak and, and, and whatever the liquid, the solution was, was a stinky solution. So I'm not going to say, I'm not sure if the smell came from her vagina or if it came from the solution that was put in her butt. But according to Mano and Uncle Murder, it was because it was that she had a stinky pussy. You just, you just smelled the odor from under the cover from between her legs. But what she was saying was that she, um, I don't know if she sued her doctor or where she was getting those um, butt enhancements. Uh, she had to have several surgeries and stuff like that, so she was going through some changes, but she was the one that had, had got the biggest butt, you know what I'm saying? She she was the one that went, and, you know, while other, other women was enhancing their butt, you know, so don't be flat, it be sticking up, she made hers, like, extra, extra big, you know. And I guess it was too much. You know, but I could never have nobody put a solution in my body, like in my breast to enhance my breast or in my butt or nothing like that. I don't even want them to um, do liposuction or, you know, where they take the the fat out of your body. I'd rather work out. I'd rather watch my diet and try it on my own um, before... You know, I have them, you know, some girls died from 
the, that solution from trying to have big butts. Imagine you dying from going to some person. Remember that black lady that went to jail? She went to jail for a long time because she was um, injecting the girl's butts with some, some kind of something, cement. <laughs> I don't know what it was. She was injecting the butts and and it was killing. It was killing um, some of the girls. And that lady, that lady had got a lot of time in jail. She got a, she had got a heavy sentence when they caught up with her, when she finally got sentenced, because I think uh, one or two ladies died. <clears throat> yeah, so just be careful out there. Take care of your body. If you could, you know, take care of your body naturally and stuff like that. Take care of your body naturally. See your doctors on the regular. You understand what I'm saying? Check your blood out. You know what I'm saying? Stay away from dirty niggas. You know what I'm saying? Don't let, you know, guys just go up in you raw. If, you know, you think you were somebody that doesn't listen to you and stuff like that. Because once you get in a room with a guy... And he decided he's not going to put his condom on. He could just rape you and, and, and go up in you raw and stuff like that. So you got to watch the whole um, personality of the person. You know what I'm saying? Is this somebody that listen? You know, you know, get your sex hygiene going. You know what I'm saying? Get your sex hygiene going. Even if you're gay, they say... Um, I remember watching one gay girl, and she was saying that she had had AIDS. Um, and I don't know if she caught it from another girl or if she was bisexual and she caught it from a guy, but she was this gay dyke girl, and she said that even though... And she was a nice-looking girl, but even though she was telling um, other girls that she had AIDS and she was sick, they still wanted to get with her. And, you know... Um, I forgot where I saw that on. It had to be online. It had to be like something YouTube or it had to be something World Star or something like that. But she was telling her story and she was saying um, that she was sick with AIDS and that, you know, because like gay females, you know, we live in a, a heterosexual society, so uh, a lot of gay females will find themselves lonely. Like me, I'm always lonely. I'm always by myself, you know what I'm saying? But so, you know, if you meet somebody and stuff like that, you know, you might um, look past their flaws because, you know, you know, if you're not living in Alphabet City, if you're not living in the village where all the other gay people is at, you know what I'm saying, where you run it, or you're not constantly going to a gay club or something like that, you know what I'm saying, you're not going to be just running into gays easy where, you know, you're going to be rapping to them or, or whatever the situation is. You know, you walk down the street, you see regular people, you know what I'm saying? Once in a while you see gays or you see a couple or something like that, so... Uh, us, you know, it's uh, a lot of times it's a lonely world, you know what I'm saying? Unless you go to a club, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's just it's just more difficult for a gay female. The guys, I don't know. They go to their clubs the same way in the village. But... Like Young Buck said, he got catfished. You know, they be trying to meet regular guys and stuff, and they be trying to put on wigs and makeup and hide the fact that they're a guy. And if they attract a regular man, you know what I'm saying, and they try to take him home, and the guy find out that, you know, he's a man and not a woman, that he got catfished or whatever the situation is, uh, that guy could kill him. You know what I'm saying? You don't know... What people would do, you know. Some dudes might just go ahead and, you know, have sex with them. And other dudes might want to kill them, you know what I'm saying? So, anyway, we, we winding down to our hour. I got this out the way early today because I got to study for my test. But um, I dropped some real jewels today. 
And um, yeah, I had a serious problem uh, for a whole lot of years um, that, uh, you know, people was able to capitalize and knock me down about. But you see now my hair is good. You know, I usually wear a ponytail, but you know, I got my hand braids and stuff like that. And a lot of a lot of girls that wear those wigs, you know, a lot of niggas be thinking, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm with a, a fly girl, you ugly and stuff like that. But if your girl is wearing the wig, or your girl is wearing braids all the time, watch and see that um, you know, her hairline might be all the way back here. You know what I'm saying? And she need to stop wearing those wigs. If you're wearing those wigs and you take off your wig and your that glue is taking out all of, the, all of your hairline, you need to stop wearing those wigs, stop wearing um, those braids, and and get that back together. Go to the dermatologist and get your hair growing back up in the front again. You understand what I'm saying? And take care of your scalp, okay? And take care of your skin. All right, so that's it for me. That's, you know, my personal story. You know, I ain't got nothing no deeper than that to come out with. You know what I'm saying? So that's the best y'all going to get out of me or whatever the situation is. So peace. I'm out.